He pitches like that, you know, it's lights out. They got a they got a mediocre performance last night, I thought, from Hudson, but they got a great performance today from Zito. They certainly did, Dennis. And once Zito had that lead to work with, he was uh, I mean, on his game. I mean, how do you give a guy a five-run lead like Zito? Next thing you know, he's 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 free and easy with that curveball, and that curveball was from hell today. And you know, Wakefield, he goes out there, has one bad inning, but this is all about Zito with that nasty curveball. Jerry, what could the Red Sox hitters do? I mean, uh, at one point in the game, they were saying, look for the curveball. You can't hit that curveball if you're looking for it. No, you don't want to look for the curveball. You know, here's a guy that throws only about 88 miles an hour with his fastball. Uh, but when he has the curveball going, it makes that fastball look like it's 95. And there were a couple of times today where he did get some strikeouts with the fastball because guys might have been sitting on the curveball. Why you would sit on that thing, I have no idea because you can't hit it anyway. All right, we're going to have post-game reaction from Oakland coming up. We'll hear from Red Sox manager Grady Little. Tom Karen will be live in Oakland in just a little bit. And we will talk a little bit about last night as well because it is, of course, relevant with the Red Sox down 2 nothing. I should tell you that 19 times teams have led two games to none in this uh, American League Division Series. 16 times have gone on to win this series. The three teams that have come back, Seattle, the Yankees, and your Boston Red Sox against the Cleveland Indians. And, Jerry, you made the point right off the top here that this team's been resilient all year long. I know it's a, it's a tough task to say you're going to win three straight, but this team has done it before and they've done it all season long. Well, do I think they can beat the Athletics three games? Sure I do, but the way things are set up right now with the pitching is going to be very, very difficult to do. You know, last night, Derek Lowe gets in that game out of the bullpen, Eck, and, you know, he's expected to come back and pitch tomorrow, and, uh, you know, with the back against the wall like it's going to be, We'll see how Lowe reacts to that. Now you get Pedro, who threw 130 pitches. He's never been as good as second time out after a high pitch count. How's he going to be when he comes back? Wakefield now goes to the bullpen. And they've got things set up where they've got Hudson. That's going to be in pretty good shape for them. And they've also got Zito ready for the final game if they need it. So they're in very good shape with their pitching. Well, I think what they got to do is they got to light up Lilly on Saturday. I mean, the offense has to show up. This offense is so much better than Oakland's offense, it's an absolute joke. But when you have a good pitching like Hudson and Zito, it's tough to do. But if they come back to Fenway, this offense will be alive. If not, they're dead. Jerry, I know we said uh, Zito was awesome. That's where the credit lies today in Oakland. But I would imagine that the Red Sox hitters had even a tougher task after what happened last night to know that, okay, we lose now. He, this guy has his good stuff today. We're going to be in a 2 nothing hole. You could kind of see that tentativeness at the plate. You could. And, you know, coming off a game at last night, like last night, it's hard to know how these guys are going to react. You know, they get back to the hotel probably around 1.30, 2 o'clock. You get some short rest. You come back to the ball. Probably no batting practice today. I'm not even sure if they had that, which, you know, is not a real major thing at this point of the season. But, you know, I've always said momentum carries you as long as your next guy on the mound. And the next guy on the mound today was for Oakland was for Zito, and he carried that momentum for them from that game last night. David Ortiz has done absolutely nothing in this series against his pitching staff, and the key guys, Ramirez, Ortiz, guys that have been hot all season long, right now are doing nothing. Here's a good example of that 12-6 curveball that we've been talking about, and this pitch is absolutely unhittable. And the Red Sox did not hit it, and uh, Barry Zito, it just seemed like Dennis, he was pitching with supreme confidence. Yeah, he really was. I mean, you know, once you give a guy that like this, a, a Cy Young Award winner, a five-run lead, I'm mean, telling you, it takes a little off. He doesn't worry about hanging a breaking ball anymore. And when you don't worry about hanging something, you make a nasty pitch. Let's talk about that second inning, because uh, that's really where the game turned. It didn't seem like Tim Wakefield had his good stuff early, and then he settled down. He was terrific. But that second inning, some sloppy defense, you can't win in the playoffs if you can't catch the ball. Now, two things, uh, obviously, that come to mind is the play by Manny Ramirez or the non-play by Manny in left field. And I think, you know, watching him play all season long, he plays very shallow in Fenway Park. I don't think he made the adjustment in Oakland. I mean, uh, and in a day, as you know, Eck, the ball travels much better in that ballpark than it does at night. Now, this ball, the sun's out. Obviously, he might have had a little trouble. But see how shallow Manny's playing out there? Now, that's not very deep. That's only 367 out to the gaps. So you could see by, you know, the start of that, how close he was in toward the infield. He had no chance to catch that ball. A huge play in the game. And, of course, this is a, a major play play in the ball game. That's certainly a, a play that uh, uh, Walker should have handled on the ground and got an out out of it. Instead, he, he bobbles it, throws it away, and two runs come across. Another huge play in the game. Five nothing ball game. You got Zito pitching like that. Lights out. You know, he looked like he panicked right there. Yeah, you did. Know, he really he did. did. You know, but Wake, you know, going back to Wake to begin with, I mean, you know, he walked some guys. He hit a couple guys. He wasn't real sharp at all. You know, I, it hats off to him because he came back and pitched real well after that. Or this could have been a disaster. This could have been 8, 9, 10, nothing, and see you later. You're right about that inning, Dennis. You talk about the uh, walk to Guillen and then the hit by pitch to die. That kind of set up the whole inning. But after that, uh, Jerry, he looked really good. Yeah, he did. But, you know, it's, uh, it's like the horses left the barn. You know, after last night's game and then to come out today and fall behind by five runs quick. 
uh, not an easy thing to bounce back from. And, and again, you know, uh, when you when you look at a guy pitching on the other side that's pitching as well as Zito did today, it almost looks like they had no chance this whole game. They were no major threats in the ball game. This offense has been quieted by two very good pitches. All right, short series. It's a five-game series. I know you don't like this whole five-game business. I mean, anything can happen. I'm telling you. But the thing, in fact, the, you know, coming back from three games, you still got to go back to Oakland. And I was with a team, the Cubs. We went out and won two games against San Diego about a thousand years ago, and then went to San Diego and they swept us. It was like hello. So anything can happen. I've been on both ends of it. All right, Jerry. I want to ask you this question. We talked about it a little bit while we were watching the game. Clearly now Pedro can't pitch Game Four, right? No. After pitching that many pitches last no. night. So here's the thing: if he's going to pitch Game Five, they'd be sending him back to Oakland so he doesn't have to have that red-eye flight possibly on that Sunday game. Why not just leave him in Oakland? Well, I'll tell you what. If this was one-to-one -one right now, I'd say, yeah, go ahead and leave him there. But it's 0-2. I mean, you know, they may need Pedro some, to come in in uh, three or four and maybe get one out. Who knows? So I think he's got to come back. Uh, I, would, I'm a, I would agree with you. You know, if they, if they were tied in this series, I'd say probably leave him out there. But I think he's got to travel back with the club now. You know how it is. I mean, you get uh, the last game. You use anybody you can I mean, just to get out. I mean, they're using low already in the yeah. first game of the playoffs. And Brooke at warming up. I mean, this is insane. <laughs> Did you like that move last night, by the way, Derek no. Lowe coming into the ball no, game. No, I didn't. Situation. I didn't like it at all. I mean, you know, you've, you've had a couple of guys left in that bullpen. I would have preferred to see Arroyo come in in that ball game instead of Lowe. You know, what does this do for Derek Lowe? He, you know, one inning okay, but the second inning, I was stunned to see him back out there. He loses a game like that. You see him in the dugout after the game yeah. with his head down. You know, now this guy's got to come back and pitch here. Oh, too. I mean, how's he going to react to that? That's asking a lot. It really yeah. is asking a lot of somebody. You know, it's too bad that uh, they lost the game, but you know that has an effect carryover on a game that you come. This is a big game. He's got to pitch anyway on Saturday, let alone have to pitch in the first game. It almost seemed like panic in game one of yeah, a championship exactly. series. It, you know, to have two starters actually warming up in game one of a best of five series. If if you, if you don't have any confidence in your bullpen, it's that bad. Well, just carry six pitches. Go with four starters and a couple of your relievers and, you know, let them throw every day. I mean, it's bad enough you're taking out Kim. You're panicked to the, to the gills here. You know, you're taking out your closer with two outs after he punches out a guy the night before. Everybody's in panic mode. He also has a little bit of a cold, too, not that that plays anything into it, but you don't expect to lose in this fashion. No, that stunned everybody in the ballpark. And, uh, you know, I was watching at home, and the last thing I expected was uh, for Hernandez to drop a bunt there with the bases loaded. But, uh, you know, a good heads-up play. He caught Miller deep at third base. He stunned everybody in the ballpark, and uh, that was a huge win for Oakland on a play that, uh, you know, I didn't expect. I don't think anybody did, and certainly the Red Sox did. And you brought up uh, the point about Derek Lowe and the emotions. That was his reaction on the hill. Yeah, that's it. And, and it, it was the same thing later on when he was sitting in the dugout after the game. He never got out of that stance right there even when he sat down in the dugout. Sometimes when you get late in the playoffs, you know, you're talking about, you know, game seven of the World Series or even, if you, as you just said, late in a series, you're facing desperation, you kind of do that. But in game one to see that, I don't understand, Jerry, why Bronson Arroyo doesn't bring more confidence for, for Grady Little to say, okay, this guy can get it done because he's looked good when he's pitched for this team this year. If you're going to put him on the roster for postseason play, then you got to pitch him. I mean, if you're, not, if you're afraid to put him in because he's a young pitcher, don't put him on the roster. Put Supon on there or somebody else. I'm all in agreement of having Arroyo on there instead of those other guys. But if you got to use him, and they didn't do it last night. Uh, they, we mentioned Harden early in the game. He comes in throwing 1,000 miles an hour yeah. all over the place. Maka wasn't afraid to use him. You know, we, we didn't have Arroyo in there. I don't understand. Maka really got lucky. I think he really got lucky there. Harden <laughs> was throwing 1,000 miles an hour. This guy cannot find the plate. He gives up a bullet. They're living real well over there. A bullet to Chavez that really saved the game last night. We wouldn't be talking about this. That was a tremendous defensive play by Chavez yeah, over there at third base. So if they had brought a Royal win, you would have probably felt more comfortable with that. Well, I, I, you know, who knows what the results would have right. been. I would have had no problem with it. I expected him to come in. The last thing I expected was to see Derek Lowe in that bullpen warming up and then Josh, Josh Burkett Burke. behind him. That's the last thing I expected to see. All right, Tom Karen is in Oakland. We'll be going out there live in just a little bit. We'll hear from Red Sox manager Grady Little. We'll get the reaction and kind of get the feel for this ball club and see how they feel being down 2 nothing as the Athletics take game 2, 5-1, behind a strong pitching performance from Barry Zito. Furniture ads show you a table and six chairs for a low price. But then you read the fine print. In actuality, it's only four chairs. Who wants a dining room with only four chairs? It's an illusion. Then they nail you for the extras. Here at Bob's, it's a whole lot different. Not only do you get a table and four chairs, and what a table and four chairs, Bob's gives you two extra armchairs and two extra side chairs. No fine print here, no illusions. Furniture shopping will never be the same.
Try a delicious breakfast sandwich on a freshly baked bagel from Dunkin' Donuts. It's just the thing you've been waiting for. Stop by today for any one of our delicious breakfast sandwiches, including the new sourdough bagel sandwich for just $1.99. Just the thing. Hey, Log Boy. It's kind of warm in the casa, ain't it? Look, Log Boy's house, cold and dark. Fire Guy's house, warm and nice. It's funny, Bruce. <laughs> Natural gas heat from Keyspan is clean, reliable, and versatile. Ask about our home and hearth package with free oh, heating God. equipment. You got Keyspan in there, don't you? I've got Keyspan. And you've got, uh, logs? Keyspan Energy Delivery. The energy to think ahead. Don't need to adjust your set. Tune in and get out each week with Nesson Outdoors. Television's only all New England original outdoor programming block. It's three hours of fresh air, fun, and more. Charlie Moore, hosting all new episodes of Charlie Moore Outdoors, Northeast Journal, Camo Country, Let's Go Boating, and Divers Down. For outdoor adventure and a whole lot of more, it's Nesson Outdoors. Sponsored by Obasha on hardware, Sunday nights at 8 on Nesson. Tonight's show is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office product supplier of the Boston Red Sox. Well, before this one, the Red Sox were 1-5 in, in postseason games in Oakland, scoring a total of only 18 runs in six playoff games, and they would fall into an early deficit as Ramon Hernandez sends one into right field. Jose Guillen scores. It's 1-0. That was the start of a very bad inning for the Red Sox. Eric Burns up, and Manny Ramirez would have problems with this one on left, Jerry. Well, the high knuckle ball right there, and of course, Burns has great speed, but you can see how shallow Manny was playing on that. And uh, I don't think he drifted after that ball, Bob. I thought he went as hot as he possibly could. But I think he was fooled by the power right there of, uh, of Eric Burns getting that ball over his head. And that was a huge, huge play in the ball game. And that made it 3 to nothing. Next batter up, it's Eric Chavez. And he'll send one to second, and it should be the final out of the inning. On first review of this, I thought that that was a ball that, uh, you know, he did a heck of a job by just knocking down. But looking at it on replay, it's a ball that he maybe didn't even have to die for. Probably could have made that play to get the out. And then he panics, throws the ball away and two more runs in. So it's 5-0. The Red Sox really couldn't do much with Barry Zito, but believe it or not, Doug Mirabelli, everybody worried about his bat in the lineup. He has the stand-up double. Next batter up, it's Johnny Damon. He'll deliver with a ground rule double. Maybe a little feeling there from Red Sox Nation this offense would come to life as it's 5-1. But truth be told, Barry Zito was in command and he could do what he wanted. And then all of a sudden, here comes that curveball. He brings this curveball. I'll tell you what, it's a lot easier throwing a curveball when you know you can make a mistake. Somebody takes you deep. It's no big deal. You got a 5-1 lead. That curveball ball gets better and better every time and uh, I'll tell you what this batting order in general that has been so solid all year five through nine today in the order Jerry they go two for 19 uh, Manny Ramirez went one for eight Ortiz 0 for nine and that old cliche that says you know good pitching stops good hitting this team needs this good hitting to hit good pitching. Well, you know, I was wrong uh, last night because I said even if a guy is not at the top of the game, this team's going to score a lot of runs. And Hudson last night, in my mind, was not at the top of his game. They didn't score a lot of runs off him. You know, gutsy performance from both he and Pedro. Today, this guy was on top of his game. And this is as good as you're going to see Barry Zito with uh, not only locating his fastball, he threw a couple of change-ups that he got some strikeouts on, but the nasty curveball. And, you know, when he's going to pitch like that, lights out. Last night was such a shame too because Todd Walker was going to be a cult hero here in Boston with that kind of night hitting the two home runs but uh, costly defense last night from Todd Walker and very costly defense today. Uh, it Obviously, he's not going to be one of the best second basemen around, but that's turning into a liability. Yeah, it is. And then certainly last night, you know, a double play ball threw that away. Cost Pedro a lot more pitches. He could have maybe gone one more inning in that ball game. And today, that's a critical mistake today because, you know, the first thing is to try to knock the ball down so you're saving runs. But the fact is right here, this is a ball that he didn't have to dive for. He just looked awkward going after it. And then as he tried to pick it up and, and fall backwards and throw, that's when, you know, he's basically got to try to put it in your pocket and try to at least save one run. Dennis, what does that do from a pitcher's perspective? Well, I mean, what to do? I mean, you're already in trouble, three and one, and now it's five to one, you know, and, you know, you, now you just don't want to make it any worse. You know, you feel bad for the guy, but now I've got to get another out. You know, a lot of pitchers just give up, but, it, you know, the pressure of this game, I'll tell you, makes that guy makes Walker pa panic a little bit there. And the other thing, too, you know, when the when the AC plays like this and when they get the quick lead like that after a game like that, they, they're in total confidence for the rest of this ball game. I mean, you saw Zito relax, as you mentioned, but the whole team relaxed. You know, all of a sudden, we have this big win last night. They're giving us runs right now. Thank you very much. Did you notice, too, last night that after they came back to tie the ball game up, 
Oakland's all on the top step, and the Red Sox are all sitting back in the dugout. Well, I did notice that, but I don't put too much into that. Uh, you know, it's funny how last night it changed, you know, from Oakland having the momentum. Then when Lowe came into the game at the beginning, it seemed like the Red Sox had momentum. And then, of course, quickly it shifted back. So I don't put it. It depends on styles. You know, if you want to stand on the top with your head and backwards <laughs> and inside, I'll go ahead. I don't care. All right. Uh, let's go to Oakland right now. That's where Oakland manager Ken Mock is addressing the media. Have you seen Zito throw his curveball as effectively as he did today? Um... I got to say he has, you know, uh, this is a uh, throwback to last year. I mean, uh, here's a guy who I think it was in um, 2001. He was pitcher of the month for uh, both August and September. And uh, you know, when he's got it going, um, he can catch out with all three of the pitches. And uh, you know, he showed today that that good curveball was working. And, uh, you, know, you strike strike five of those guys in a row out. That's that shows you something how he was throwing. <clears throat> Seth. Ken, when when Zito started out, he had a couple of walks, and then you guys get the five runs. How much do you think the the, the lead helped his confidence as the innings? How much did the lead help Zito's uh, confidence as he continued? Well, actually. Uh, after we did get the lead, that's that's when they scored, and um, um, Mayor Billy hit the double, and then uh, he made a little bit of a mistake to Damon, and he lines a double too. And now you're in the middle of their lineup, uh, and to me, the the outs he got after that were the big ones of the game, you know, to uh, score and jump out and take the lead, and then have the other team come back. Uh, um, he did a great job of going through the two, three, four guys uh, to keep it the score just to one run. Anything else? How pleased are you to be able to basically shut down such a good team today? How pleased are you to be able to shut down such a good offense today? Um, you know, Barry's got the ability to do that, you know, and Tim Tim does also. Uh, but uh, those guys still had great at bats. Uh, you, you look at it, and uh, they they uh, put the pressure on both uh, Tim and Barry, uh, and it's it reflected in their pitch counts. Uh, Barry's about 110 in seven innings, so they they made him work for every out. Uh, extremely dangerous lineup, and uh, you know led the league in hitting, and and you got to make your pitches, and uh, they're going to make you throw strikes. Um, so uh, in order to, you know, pitch seven strong innings, only give up one run, that's a great job against that lineup. Yes. Ken, how much does uh, moving to Fenway Park change this series? How much does moving to Fenway change this series? I hear again, uh, I've said when the, when the, uh, the series started, you've got to play good ball. You've you got to look at it that way, good, solid ball. We played uh, solid defense the last two days. We've got the good pitching. Uh, we've got some timely hitting. Uh, you know, that's the formula. And uh, whether it be at Fenway or here or wherever, uh, the team that plays the best is a solid game. It, it are normally is the one that winds up on top. And uh, that's got to be our focus. Uh, you know, we've, we've played a lot of great games in Fenway the last couple of years. Uh, some of the most exciting games I've ever witnessed. And um, I've, I've seen a few major league games. So. Uh, it'll be exciting. Their, their fans are, are relentless, and uh, you know uh, it'll be an interesting. It'll it'll be fun. Bob. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Uh, Ken, how much credit do you give your advanced scouts for dealing with Ortiz and Ramirez? How much credit do you give to your advanced scouts for Ortiz and Ramirez? Well, we we compile a whole lot of information. Um, the the advanced scout is uh, one one piece of the the puzzle. Um, and he does a great job with it. Uh, uh, our pitching coach, Rick, uh, studies a, a ton of film. Uh, we have a, a video guy who basically uh, the whole month of September uh, taped almost every game the Red Sox played. So um, there's a lot of preparation that goes into this thing. Uh, not just uh, the, the advanced scouts, but uh, our pitching coach does it. And then... Uh, sit down with Terry and uh, Brad Fisher and uh, myself and uh, we go over all these uh, uh, where they hit the ball and everything and try to defend them properly so 
there's a bunch of pieces of the puzzle have to fit in, and it all deals with the preparation that we do have here in Oakland. Take a final one here. Sorry for the start, Terrence, but uh, what was the rationale behind bringing Folk in the night? What was the rationale by bringing Folk in the night? Um, told me he was fine, and that's my best pitcher, so. Thanks, Kyle. Doesn't exactly uh, show a lot of excitement, does he? But his team's up two to nothing. I want to ask you guys a question that he was asked, and that is, how does this series change coming back to Fenway Park? Well, I think it definitely changes. Obviously, the Red Sox are anxious to get home where they played as well at home as the Oakland has played at their place this year, and this place will be going crazy, you know, on on uh, Saturday night. So, you know, that they'd like to be home in a better situation, but uh, I think they'll feel more confident, better prepared, and they're facing Ted Lilly on Saturday, not facing Hudson or Zito. And you didn't, as an opposing pitcher, you don't want to come here. I'm telling you, even when, you know, the way I used to take it, you know, every game was like, you know, you, I was so precious to win this whole thing, is that you think, oh, oh my God, next game, as soon as the Red Sox go ahead, they're scared again. I mean, that's the way it is. I mean, because you know the Red Sox can take you three in a, in a row in a heartbeat. So no one's real confident right now. They may be happy for the moment, but as soon as that next game starts, they're worried. All right, let's take a quick time out here on WB Mason's X Earnings. We'll come back with more here from the studio in Fenway Park, and we'll also go out to Oakland and uh, talk with Tom Carrot. Post-game reaction from Tim Wakefield also on the way as the Red Sox fall into a 2 nothing hole against the Athletics. In the 2004 F-150, you'll find the best-in-class low-end torque that'll leave the competition in the dust. All in the truck the Detroit Free Press calls the best pickup truck ever. You think he knows the light changed? Only one truck earned the right to be the next F-150. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Men all over Europe are wearing Capri pants. Capri pants. Can I help you find something, ma'am? What? Uh, sorry. Capri's not gonna work. At Bob's, we know our customers, and we know the brands they live in. Bob's, for casual clothes and shoes. It was the crime of the century. Babe Ruth sold to the New York Yankees. And I meant to find out why. From W.B. Mason's Low Price Assurance Detectives. The name's Mason. W.B. Mason. We were searching for clues to explain why the Red Sox sold Babe Ruth when I spotted a familiar suspect. Hello, boys. Ever seen this before? My office supply bill, so. So, that's high. So high, the Red Sox sold something big to pay it. Something big? If only the Red Sox had saved money on my office supplies. Who knows what might have been? Who knew? 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 Who but W.B. Mason? Here's the Sox box, and Johnny Damon at the top of the order, even against the lefty, Jerry, he has success against Barry Zito. Yeah, he's one of the guys uh, that hits left handers pretty good, you know, and he's had success against Zito. Ortiz had had success against Zito, too, but not today. He made him look real bad, and Ortiz has had a bad series so far. The uh, Athletics have kept him in check, so, you know, when you get down to the bottom of that lineup, they haven't had much production over there uh, in both games of this series, so, uh, you know, it's been so strong all season long with guys picking up each other. It just hasn't happened, and, you know, it's kind of what I expected, Bob, because when you face good pitching, you're not going to score 10 to 14 runs a game. Well, they had a shot in that third inning when they got that one run is when they right. had a chance at it, and uh, he got out of that inning, and then he was nasty. Yeah, after the Damon double, Nomar walks, and then Todd Walker grounds out, and Manny Ramirez flies to left, and that was all she wrote. Pitching, guys, uh, Dennis, T Tim Wakefield, actually, after that one bad inning and, of course, bad defense behind him, actually turned in a pretty good performance. I mean, he really did. I mean, that's hard to do, you know. I mean, he wasn't getting any calls. He looked in there staring a few times at the umpire. He wasn't getting some pitches early on, but he, he was just wild there for a while. That one inning was huge. You can't have a bad inning uh, against a tough pitcher like that. And the bullpen, uh, I guess the horse was pretty much out of the barn at that point. Interesting that the Red Sox lost the game last night. We all 
uh, talk about how bad this team is at the end of the ball game. But they're 79 and two during the regular season when leading after eight. But last night with Byung Young Kim on the hill, were you surprised at all that Grady gave him the hook at that point? Uh, <laughs> Look, you know, when I was sitting home watching that and I saw him walk a guy and hit a guy, I wanted him out of there so bad that I didn't want to see another pitch from him because we've seen that before from him. But on the other hand, he's the closer on this team. And if he can't close the game, he should be out there to close the game out. And if he can't close it out, then you better find somebody else that can. The Red Sox haven't been able to find that. This was driving me nuts last night watching, you know, the walk and then hitting a batter. And both of these guys left-handed. So now he comes back, he gets a strikeout, but then he's got Durazo coming into the play, and it seemed to me there was no way Grady Little was gonna allow him to face Durazo. Now, if Embry was your closer, he'd have been your closer all season long. But they don't have any confidence in him doing that. So he was in the game last night in that situation, base hit, and we continue on to extra innings. Well, that's the story of the Red Sox. That's what it's all about. Watching that tape and watching Kim throw. I like him to take that slider that he throws <laughs> inside to a left hand and shove it right in his back <laughs> pocket because it stinks. Keep throwing that nasty sinker down and away. I, I'd like that better. I'd like to watch that. But like Jerry said, you know, th this is the story of the Red Sox. And, and if he's your closer, I'm sticking with this guy, and that's the way it is. By the way, Jerry, that gun last night, he's not throwing 96. No. Tell me, he's not throwing 96. Hey, all of a sudden, he's on steroids. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't get it. He hasn't thrown over 90 all year long, and last night he's 96, 97, and everybody's going, woo, you know. He wasn't throwing 97 no. miles. It was 87 miles an hour. Right. Well, you were watching that gun. You had to be saying that at home. Well, maybe my kid asked me, he says, did he throw 97? I said, no way. He's never, never in his life. No, right. it's ridiculous. That gun, you could take that gun and put it in your <laughs> back pocket, too. All right, before Dennis puts anything else in his back pocket, let's go back to Oakland. Let's hear from Tim Wakefield. He pitched well in the losing effort. Uh, I don't know what was going on. I just couldn't find the strike zone. So we talked about yesterday, how things all of a sudden start flying. Yeah, that's what happens, you know. Um, I hope it doesn't happen, but uh, you know, I tried to battle as hard as I could to stop the bleeding there in the second inning and just couldn't get it done. How about the other side? Zito certainly pitched a good game. Yeah, I mean, you got to tip your hat to those guys, you know. Um, Zito pitched a great game for them, and, you know, to hold our offense to one run is pretty impressive. Any care of effect from last night, given how late the game went yesterday in terms of or this morning? Speaking on me or the team? You have to ask them. I have no idea. Is there any explain in your mind from, from inning to inning how you get and lose the feel of the moment? Um, Peter, I, I can't explain it. I don't know. Um, usually my ball moves, you know, down, uh, up to down, and that inning, for some reason, it was it was darting all over the place and moving into right-handers, and I couldn't couldn't get it back over the plate. And uh, you know, I hit a couple guys, and you know, walked walked a couple guys today. Well, a lot of times after a game, he's asked about uh, you know when he felt like he had it or what kind of adjustment he made. Usually, he admits. I don't know. He just throws it up there. I mean, as a manager, I, w I can't stand it, you know, because you don't really know what's going to happen at any given time. You're at the mercy of the umpire, first of all, that you get a good game call behind the plate. And at any given time, the umpire might say, ball. And then at any given time, that, 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 that knuckleball might, you know, today it hit a couple guys. It wasn't like he left one out over the plate. And here's a guy, Burns, who can't hit a you know, hit his weight, and he's the only guy that hits a double, you know, almost off the wall. So you never know with Wake. You know, you just never know. It's, it's a flip of the coin, but this year he's been consistent all year, and he had one bad inning. And that trouble in that inning also started with that walk after getting the first batter out. He walks him, then he, then he hits the batter. Yeah, the knuckleball was unmanageable in that one inning, you know, and then all of a sudden it seemed to calm down and he got more control of it. You know, you, people ask you all the time, how do you approach hitting a knuckleball pitcher? I don't have an answer to that because he doesn't even know what that knuckleball is going to do. He doesn't know if it's going to go down and in, down and away, up, rise, you know, drop. He doesn't know when he lets it go. And so uh, today he had that one, one bad inning where he just couldn't uh, get his control going, and uh, they jumped on it that inning. Red Sox made a couple of mistakes. And uh, when you're facing a guy like Barry Zito today, five runs in one inning is no good. And then when you get to the end of the ball game, we watched Keith Folk pitch so well last night, and he came back again today. So Oakland clearly also has this idea, you know, they've got to get past this first round. Well, I'm sure they do. I mean, they're not looking past this, though. I mean, they're looking at, they're worried right now coming to Boston because this lineup is bound to open up. They got Lilly on Saturday. The Red Sox come out and pound the ball off Lilly. Then all bets are off. All right, I want to ask you guys a quick question, too, about this whole pitching deal. Obviously now they're in a big hole down 2 nothing, and you're talking about Tim Hudson maybe pitching game four. We all seem to be in agreement that Pedro can't pitch game four, so you're talking about a John Burkett, Tim Hudson matchup. 
Would it make any sense at all to move Derek Lowe back a day, considering that he pitched last night, have him go against Hudson if you get there, and have you know John Bricka go against Ted Lilly? Because you guys both seem to be in agreement that this offense should hit Ted Lilly. Yeah, but for me, uh, I've got to have Lowe out there. But he's my second best pitcher. You haven't won a game yet. You lose your next game, you're going home for the long offseason. So I've got to throw my best pitcher out there. And right now, my best pitcher is Derek Lowe. If we're lucky enough to get a win, and you move on to the next game, then you take a shot with Burkett. The one advantage there is that Wakefield should be able to come back in that game in the John Burkett game. So if he, if he has any troubles early in the game, they can go right to Wakefield from there. All right, Barry Zito was awesome today for Oakland. Let's get his reaction back at the ballpark. Was your plan going in to throw a curveball two or three times in a row that are big hitters, or was it just because it was working well? No, the plan going in is, is um, basically adjust to the hand that you're dealt when you're out there. You know, and uh, if you go out in the game and you don't have your change up and your, you know, your fastball commands were good, then, you know, you kind of change accordingly. So there was never a plan to just, you know, throw uh, curveballs to everybody. But, you know, when it's working pretty good, you know, it's hard to uh, get away from it because, you know, you'd second guess yourself and say, well, uh, I don't know why I didn't throw a curveball right there. It was pretty good today. You know? Over here. Did their strategy of going left, right, left, right, backfire for them and help you? Um, you know, I didn't even notice it was left, right until you said it. I mean, I, I just knew that there was three lefties in the in the lineup today, and um, you know, they had said that they're going to play their lefties, so. Uh, you know, I just kind of pitch accordingly, I think, to every hitter. And, you know, their left-handed hitters are great. I mean, um, you know, and they got that lineup, which is a little different. They got Walker in third now uh, from the last time I faced them. But, you know, Ortiz is very dangerous, Walker, and, and also Johnny. Uh, you know, Johnny played with us, so I know what he can do. So, you know, I just kind of pitched uh, to each hitter individually, I think. Well, interesting question to Barry Zito. I don't know how it would help him, the fact that the Red Sox go left, right, left, right. But I want to ask you this. I mean, all season long, the Red Sox basically went with Nomar in front of Manny, and now you have Todd Walker between the two of them. Do you like that change? I did like the change because Nomar was not hitting in the month of September, and Todd Walker was hot. And I felt like Walker would get a lot more fastballs hitting in front of Manny Ramirez, and also it would free up Nomar if he got on base to be able to steal some. So I don't have a problem with that, and uh, we've seen you know Walker continue to swing the bat well in the postseason. I don't know. Against a left-handed pitcher, though, your best hitter is usually the third hitter. So, I mean, after last night, what can you say about a guy who goes four for five with two bombs, and all of a sudden, uh, I'm going to say he shouldn't be hitting third. So, I don't know. If it's a left-handed pitcher, I mean, maybe he should be hitting back at second or lower in the lineup. I don't know. Zito's also one of those left-handers that, you know, you see better as a left-handed hitter. Uh, it's a little bit different than some of those guys that come three-quarters. He's right over the top, so lefties generally get a pretty good look at him. And in the lineup today, guy, uh, Walker hadn't faced him very much, but Damon's had success against him, and also Ortiz has had success against him. Not today, though. Have you seen uh, improvement in Nomar? I mean, we've watched him month by month. You know, it's been really kind of a roller coaster ride for him this season, Jerry. I mean, you see more games than any of us, but look what he's done this season. I mean, April, he was not Nomar like. Then he went through May and June, where he was terrific, struggled in July, got it back in August, and then was dreadful in September. Well, to me, watching every game in September, it just looked to me like he was trying to pull everything, you know. And I don't know if that's because of fatigue. He wanted to hit some home runs. It felt, felt like he did, maybe didn't have the strength to do it. And he was opening up too soon and pulling the ball. And that's really got him some bad habits I think and uh, you know I, I've always said he's at the best when he's going from right center field over to left field and uh, we didn't see much right center field stuff from late in the year it seemed like he was flying open a little bit too soon and popping a lot of balls up and I think it's because like, he was trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark hmm. last night and today I mean it seems like he's getting it getting it back a little bit more drew the walk today also had a hit yeah I mean you don't keep guys like that down that long and it's surprising to see him go a whole month with a low batting average like he had but uh, I mean he's a guy they've all got to get hot now I mean and they, and they should this is a lineup that's going to score some runs. The question is when, and you can't wait any longer than one more game. Absolutely. Let's take another time out here on W.B. Mason's X earnings. Come back, and we'll have more reaction from Oakland. Five to one, the Athletics take game two, and they lead the series two games to none. With your first love comes a first breakup. And with that first breakup comes an older brother. You'll be okay. Who knows just the right thing to say. Come on, let's go. Can you take it? Can you feel it? Playoff baseball. Now, from Fenway Park in Boston, it's the Red Sox trying to stay alive in Game 3 of the American League Division Series.
in 2003 has been a remarkable season, featuring baseball's most prolific offense. But the postseason has matched the Sox sluggers against the A's and the American League's top pitching staff. In game one, Pedro Martinez and Tim Hudson matched up, and the game went into the wee small hours with a stunning finish. Game two, Cy Young winner Barry Zito baffled the powerful Boston Sluggers and left the stumbling Sox within one game of elimination. Now, the Red Sox return to friendly Fenway with Derek Lowe on the mound. For the Red Sox, it's win or go home for the winner. Time is running out. home of the Red Sox and the Red Sox are hoping to play many more games this year here in October but they will have to win tonight if they're to do so tonight the Red Sox face elimination at home the Oakland Athletics are trying to sweep the Sox the Red Sox returning home are hoping to turn this series around they are in dire straits however trailing two games to none they hand the ball to their ace right-hander Derek Lowe 17 and 7 for the year at 11 and 2 here at Fenway Park meanwhile Oakland will go with Ted Lilly 12 and 10 overall but he won six in a row down the stretch helping